How did Qbert get that mouth? The answer to that surprised me. I had just created a series of voice synthesizer diagnostic boards and thought I would demonstrate the Votrax version by programming it to be a Qbert obscenity generator. But I quickly discovered that the circulated method of doing that isn't as complete as we had been led to believe. So in this video, I'm going to reveal the secret tricks that the creators of Qbert used to achieve that iconic voice. Now, obviously, the primary purpose of the board is not to cuss like Qbert. It's to do a full diagnostic test of the Votrax SC01 voice synthesizer. But since that chip is the actual chip used in the original Qbert arcade machines, then the tester board can roll out a string of gutter talk exactly like Qbert does. In fact, all of the colorful voices in this arcade machine are generated by the Votrax. <laughs> Those familiar with the Votrax may be wondering how all this is possible. After all, the voices rolling out of every other Votrax-equipped arcade machine, such as Gorf and Wizard of War and Black Hole, sound flat and robotic in comparison. The reason for that difference is because the creators of those other games followed the instructions, while the creators of Qbert were thinking outside the box. Now, outside the coolness factor of having a genuine Qbert voice spouting out a string of filth, you may be wondering why anyone would even need to test a Votrax. One answer to that is that the retro arcade repair shops are dealing with a renewed demand for the vintage machines that use them. But the SC01 chips themselves, which haven't been manufactured since the 80s, are old and dying. They're also getting rather scarce and expensive, which means that anyone who wants to get one of these boards just to do this project is going to have a hard time getting their hands on a Votrax chip. But that won't be a problem for much longer because I'm working on a pin-for-pin drop-in replacement for the SC01. You should subscribe if you're interested in that, because I will be covering it in detail on this channel. But I digress. Let's get this Votrax tester board swearing like a cubert. Technically speaking, this thing is an Arduino shield, so the first thing we need to do is load the Arduino IDE. Then we'll add in the Votrax library, make a call to the setup routine, and implement a loop that can repeat a phrase every second. The second thing we need to do is understand how the Votrax is supposed to be used and the various ways in which Qbert's sound designer, David Thiel, bent it to his will. Like all phoneme-based synthesizers, the Votrax produces speech by stringing together the sounds of phonemes. Phonemes, in case you don't remember from grammar school, are the building blocks of speech. They are the individual sounds we make when speaking. For example, if you say chip, you are making the three phonetic sounds ch, i, p. In order to get the Votrax to make those same sounds, we look them up in the Votrax phoneme chart, retrieve their numeric codes, create a routine that will send those numbers to the Votrax, and then call that routine from our once a second repeater loop. Then we upload that program to the tester board and listen to how it sounds. Ship. Ship. Coolness factor Ship. 11, right? Ship. I mean, hit the like button if Ship. you agree, because David Ship. didn't think so. I'll let the creator of the Qbert, Warren Davis, tell you all about it in this snip from the 2017 Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Our soundboard had a chip on it called a Votrax chip. It's supposed to be a chip that generates voices. It's uh, the, the chip that that yellow arrow was pointing to. Well, Dave hated this chip. It, it worked off of phonemes. He would claim that if he tried to program it to say bonus, it sounded like bogus. And he, he just hated it, so his idea was Let's just throw random numbers at this phoneme generator, and that will be Hubert's speech. Now, sometimes people claim they hear nasty words. And uh, seriously, there are no nasty words. It's literally random. But that doesn't mean you're not hearing a nasty word, because it's possible to put two syllables together, or two phonemes together, and to come up to a nasty word. So there's nothing in there to prevent nasty words. What this tidbit of public information tells us is that Dave didn't spend his time researching and programming a list of dirty words. Instead, he just did something along the lines of creating a procedure with a single loop, and then inside that loop, generating a random number, and then sending that number to the Votrax. Let's download this to the tester and see what it sounds like. Okay, obviously Warren was holding out on us. Clearly, there is more to this recipe than just random phonemes, because, as you probably noticed, the obscenities never end and the pitch is too low. I will discuss the pitch in a minute because it is a whole conversation in of itself. For now, let's stay focused on fixing that continuous stream of excrement by chopping it up into individual bad words of random length. 
We'll accomplish that by generating another random number somewhere in the range of 10 to 20, give or take a few, and then use that number as a loop counter. This way, each vulgarity will have a random number of syllables. That is sounding better, but other than the pitch, something is missing. Leave me a comment if you can tell what it is. What I hear is that our mix of saucy words sounds calm and relaxed, like an 80s era robot passively reciting crude poetry to his vacuum cleaner on a starry night. While Kubert's coarse language has that rushed enunciation <laughs> the one would expect from someone who just got whacked. To figure out why these sound different, let's pull the Votrax phoneme chart back up and look at the duration values. This is the average amount of time that each phoneme takes in normal human conversation. The way the Votrax implements this is as follows. When the Votrax starts enunciating a phoneme, it sets a timer for its duration value. And when that timer goes off, the Votrax requests the next phoneme. And when its timer goes off, it does it again, and so on and so forth. This keeps the Votrax chatter running at a normal sounding pace, which is why those other arcade machines sound so calm and unemotional. Force accelerated. But Kubert, on the other hand, appears to snub his snout at that proper timing. It appears this way because an analysis of the cursed voice waves reveals that each phoneme plays for no more than 80 milliseconds and then is hacked off by the next phoneme. This was a subtle but clever trick to get Kubert's crapola fits to sound distressed. We can duplicate this in our code by simply adding the desired duration to the say command. <laughs> Now that is starting to sound more like Qbert. But we still need to get the pitch of that frenzied enunciation of Bullock's up to the level of Qbert's voice. Looking back at the Votrax documentation, we can see that by using two hardware control lines, the SCL1 chips can generate speech at four different pitches that one would expect from normal speech inflections. For, you know, like asking a question? But Qbert's kitten farts are much, much higher in pitch than any of them, which raises the question, how did Dave pull that one off? Well, it turns out that he was once again thinking outside the box, this time with a seriously underused feature of Gottlieb's System 80 soundboard. You see, the designers of the System 80 created custom circuitry around the Votrax that would allow game programmers to directly change the frequency of the clock that runs the Votrax. Some may call that overclocking, but it can underclock as well. This means that instead of being limited to one of four narrow band pitches, the programmers can speed up and slow down the entire Votrax chip, resulting in a much larger range. You can think of this like spinning a record at different speeds, because it has exactly the same effect. Forget about 45 and 33, just reach down there and turn it at any old speed you want. And unlike the programmers of those other arcade machines who didn't seem to appreciate the potential of this feature, David Thiel pushed it to its limit, literally. Thus, in order to get Kubert's rantings up to a higher pitch, he pushed the frequency of the Votrax clock way up. To get the rattlings of Ugg, the purple upside down dude, he pushed it way down. And to get that falling articulation that is so iconic, he panned the frequency from way up high to all the way down to zero. Oh. Now, the tester board can also change the clock to match the pitch of Kubert's Dagnabbits, but it has to be set manually. Now that sounds like Kubert. So now, now that I have a Kubert voice synthesizer, I can make him say anything I want to say. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching, and if you want to learn about another speech chip, then watch this video. If you want to experiment with this kind of stuff, be sure to visit speechchips.com. If you like the information you learned in this video, please like it with a button and a sub. And if you made it all the way to here, I know you have a friend or two that is also interested in how Kubert got his voice, so go ahead and share.